Diplomacy is one of the several tools that the Authority employs to maintain relations with local and national governments to ensure that any operation that they initiate is not interfered with by these institutions. Interference by a government institute often occurs if the Authority does not have peaceful relations with the government or is simply too anti-Authority on that matter. You've often heard me say the term anti-Authority throughout the channel, and may have some glimpse of understanding of what it is. The term refers to individuals, or groups, or in this case, governments, to be on the opposing side of supporting the authority. And do understand that whenever I am elaborating the term anti-authority, I am referring to national governments and countries that don't support the existence of the current authority organization, and may, to an extent, would want it to be under supervision of a third party, such as the United Nations Anomalous Activities Committee. Three countries stand on top of the list regarding the discussion of anti-authority nations, the Russian Federation, the People's Republic of China, and the United States of America. Let's talk about anti-authority nations and the reasons for such opposition towards the authority in the first place. Amongst those top three nations listed, there are a few minor states that are, to an extent, anti-authority, these being including the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the Islamic State of Iran, Republic of Belarus, the Republic of the Philippines, and Vatican City, and much more. Many of the above countries appear on the list seeing as they oppose the authority for a variety of reasons. Take for instance the Vatican City. Given the historical relationship between the former Actoritas and the institution of the RPC Authority, which challenged the Vatican's authority, Authority-Holy See relations are often ambiguous to downright hostile. Diplomatic relations with government institutions have existed since the Octoritas' infancy, when the Catholic Church's influence and power helped develop the legitimacy and authority for the Octoritas to function in nations where Catholicism is dominant. This trend continued over the centuries with minor setbacks as Catholicism propagated to the New World. The Spanish and French countries were some of the first to support the Octoritas' mission, though the English were heavily divided on the matter. When it came to English relations in the 1500s, King Henry VIII was initially cooperative of the Catholic Church and the Octoritas operating in English territory. His support towards the Church, however, ended after he placed himself as the head of the Church of England, which also meant rejecting the papacy and the Octoritas. After King Henry VIII was succeeded by her daughter, Queen Mary I, support for the Octoritas reverted into the English realm. The British were among the few early adversaries of the Octoritas within their territorial boundaries, but as time and governments evolved, relations with the modern authority developed to the point where the United Kingdom appeared as an ally of the organization. Between earlier periods of the 16th and 19th century, most European nations consistently maintained cooperation with the authority, however this fluctuated during the Second World War and the Cold War, with several Eastern and non-aligned nations staying neutral in most authority activity. Instead of focusing on particular regions, let's interpret the more critical question of what provokes a country to become a staunch critic of the authority inside its own borders. It all comes down to three key factors, sovereignty, national interests, and historical relations. These three are the common causes of countries to become anti-authority, with the latter historical relations being the chief reason for strained relations such as the aforementioned authority Holy See relations. Even so, if it weren't for sovereignty and national interests, not all nations would hold a negative perception of the authority. Let me convey what I mean by these terms. Sovereignty refers to a country's rights to self-governance and autonomy, and countries like the Russian Federation would not desire for the authority to operate on their territory since it undermines the Russian government's ability to govern and react to anomalies on its own initiatives. National interests are the specific constraint arrangements that governments have with the authority about actions pertaining to their own nation. And when I say this, I'm referring to the question of whether a country's anomaly agency has more or equal influence to that of the authority. To put this in perspective, when a country chooses to grant the authority full autonomy to operate within its borders, it loses some capacity to contain or monitor anomalies. The Italian government is an instance of such in which all anomaly-related issues in the Republic of Italy are handled by the authorities' Italian branch. Ispo facto, the underlying detriments of a country's anti-authority sentiment are these core issues, but whether a country's reliance on their respective anomaly agency is in their best interest depends on their political interests and capacity to fund such institutions. We can observe this trend of pattern as the more of a country relies on its anomaly agency, the more it appears towards a neutral or anti-authority stance, although this remains subjective. 
Let's gather the data and present it on a map, and special thanks to TTPY for developing this amazing information displayed here. You'll notice only two countries have little to none authority presence in their borders, and those being China and Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan is an extraordinary case since authority involvement in the region began during the Octoritis' years, when Eurocentric and West-centric ideology was their policy for the last 400 years until the Soviet Union. Their presence in the region was limited in part due to Soviet influence, and refusal to provide support for RPC-616 following the Verdan Grove incident in 1996. You'll also notice a lot of Central Asian countries have centered their policies in limiting authority reach within their region, but let's focus on the more prominent countries for this video. Given that a country like the United States of America would almost certainly be in the anti-authority category, why are China, Russia, and the US are regarded to be the most anti-authority countries out there? To better understand this, we need to investigate the historical relations aspect as it is one of the biggest drivers for the three mentioned nations. Early associations with China, particularly the Qing Dynasty, can be attributed to the Boxer Rebellion, during which the authority intended to kidnap several members of the Demon Hunters, a group responsible for the Qing Dynasty's containment and suppression of anomalies. This plan was an integral step towards establishing the Chinese branch to guarantee that no resistance stood in its way and was informed until October 1902. However, the Boxer Rebellion changed China's attitude after Chinese artifacts and documents were pillaged in order to avoid, quote, such likelihood of the abuse of the occult at wrong hands. This shift in attitude is believed to have an implication on China's veiled strategy. Only until the emergence of the People's Republic of China, authority Sino relations remained optimistic. Relations with the newly formed communist nations were objective because the directorate, which strengthened during the Korean War in 1950, generally supported the Kuomintang government. The Communist Party of China forcibly removed authority presence in 1976 as part of a security act enforced by the CCP, which was successful in most areas. Over the next 23 years, the Chinese government struggled to keep the authority out of its borders, and by the end of the 20th century, resorted to negotiations with the organization. On the island of Glangyu, negotiations took place resulting in the 5th Authority Committee of Glangyu Convention and signatory to the Memorandum on Anomalous Management and Application Cooperation. Despite the ambiguous nature of authority Sino relations, the Chinese are more reliant on their anomaly agency, the People's Committee for the Acquisition of Anomalous Objects, to take care of matters on Chinese soil than the authority on a strict cooperation necessitated a situation. More often than not, the Chinese government is willing to act hostile against the authority when it does or threatens their national interests. Which is a polite way of saying Gun Shu Shi. Russia comes in second as among the three anti-authority nations, attributing to a tumultuous history with the authority as well as a single individual. Despite their indifference, Russia is one of the few nations that is considerate to the authority's mission, but with a few major setbacks. When it came to the anomalous world, Russia was one of the few early pioneers of international courts, consorting with Europe in governing and reframing much of the anomalous. However, authority Russo relations were not without flaws. Russia's relations with the authority, like earlier interactions and subsequent evolution into special agreements, were distinctive but similar to other European nations in the early 1900s. Significant relations quickly deteriorated when the Russian Civil War broke out, with the Bolsheviks prompting the use of anomalies during the conflict, which led to the authority becoming heavily involved. After 23 years to isolate communistic influence and activity from its anomalous resources, the authority eventually withdrew its saboteur activity due to escalation of the Austrian War, leaving authority-Soviet relations strained while the Soviets continued to exploit anomalies for the next half century. The Russian branch was established in 1993 following the collapse of the Soviet Union and the rise of an independent federation. The former Soviet Anomaly Agency, the Soviet Iron Initiative, left a power vacuum that paved the way for the anomaly market period, during which the authority participated in covert competition with several other groups of interest to secure anomalous assets left behind by the defunct Soviet Institute. 
Under Yeltsin, authority russo relations were significantly more positive than in the former Soviet Union, as he conceded transferring most of their anomalous assets to the Russian branch in hope that it would re-establish Russia within the anomalous world under the framework of the authority. This period ended abruptly when Vladimir Putin assumed office and established the Ministry of Paranormality to address the conflicting interests of the board of directors and the federal government. Relations are currently tense, with the Kremlin demanding high levels of transparency and bureaucracy in its dealings with the authority while also relying on their continued support in shaping Siberia's containment and security. Initially forming the American branch in the 1880s during the authority's expansion into the United States, many believe that the relations with the United States would be somewhat relatively better than the two other adversaries that we were just talking about before. But it couldn't be further from the truth. Relations between the authority and the United States are currently tenuous, notwithstanding certain events in 2019. Even before that, in the 1920s, America faced widespread anti-occultism in the United States Congress. President Woodrow Wilson directed the conversion of federal property into authority facilities by having Congress, specifically the Overman Committee, pass legislation requiring the transfer of foreign installations to the federal government. This sparked a full escalation in 1928, with the federal government attempting to remove the authority from the US territory, which was deemed futile due to a lack of influence. Even after Wildrow Wilson's term ended, the United States maintained its anti-authority and anti-occultic policies until the late 1930s when President Roosevelt made amends with the organization, agreeing to withdraw many of its anti-occultic policies in exchange for the authority's participation in the war against Germany and Japan. This resulted in Roosevelt signing an agreement and issuing an executive order that maintained the authority's presence, with Truman succeeding Roosevelt and carrying on with his domestic policy. That is until Ronald Reagan took office and relations became neutral. Relations soon deteriorated further when a nuclear detonation occurred in Nevada, prompting some of the federal government to question authority activity in the United States. As a result, these three nations are not particularly fond of the authority organization, but a few who are often considered anti-authority will remain supportive of the organization, so long as it serves a vital interest to their national interest, or otherwise, counter-authority measures will be instituted. Such measures include exclusively removing the authority from their territory. Although this only occurred in a few countries, including the People's Republic of China, the French Republic, Turkmenistan, and the Russian Federation, which were effective in implementing in such measures. Of course, such measures are ordinarily only temporary, as evidenced by the return of the authority to these respective countries. <laughs> 